Hello again and welcome back to the channel. On this episode, I thought we would take a look at connecting the Behringer XR18 to OBS for live streaming. You'll need to download some software and drivers, and I'll leave the links for those in the text below. From the Behringer website, you'll need the USB audio drivers for the XR18, unless you're using a Mac. Macs don't need drivers for the XR18. You should also check the firmware version that you're using in your Behringer XR18, and if it's not up to date, you can download the latest firmware here and go ahead and update it while you're at it. I'm using the Xair Edit PC software to control the XR18, and you can also download that here, or the Mac version, or you can use your iPad or tablet. No matter what, PC users will need the XR18 USB audio drivers, and you'll want to install those on the computer that you'll be streaming from. You'll be connecting the XR to the computer using USB. Your Cat5 or Wi-Fi connection is only for mixer control and not the audio connection. Next, you'll want to go to the OBS site and download the OBS streaming software and install that. With your XR18 connected to the streaming computer via USB and powered on, we're ready to open the OBS software and configure it. OBS will look like this. You'll want to click File and then Settings. Then mouse down and click the audio icon on the left side of the window. Make sure your sample rate is 48K. It should default to your proper desktop audio settings, so we can leave that alone. At the mic slash auxiliary audio dropdown, there should be an option for N12 Behringer XR. Choose that. If that is not there, then you'll need to check your USB connection, check that the XR is powered up, and try reinstalling the Behringer USB audio drivers and rebooting your computer. I'm going to suggest leaving the rest of these settings at their defaults. You can configure your video settings after the audio is connected and working. If you're new to OBS, their website has a lot of information to guide you through adjusting video, connecting your camera, adding text, overlays, etc. And that link will be below. As for audio monitoring, you'll be listening to your mix with headphones or speakers connected to the XR18. This is a configured version of OBS as we might see for a stream. The mic slash aux meter and fader is the one we're concerned about. That will be your audio feed coming into OBS. As you can see, you have an online fader to adjust volume and an online meter to guide you. The other audio devices that you'll likely see here, you'll want to turn down and mute. Where you see video capture device, that is the mic on my camera. I have it muted and turned down since we don't want that mic audio in our stream. We only want the audio from the XR18. I also have the desktop audio turned down and muted. There are a couple of situations where you might want that unmuted. If you have a video to play during the stream, then this is where you'd adjust the volume for that. You also might have a pre-roll video to play prior to the band taking the stage or the service or conference to start. Something like this. Other than that, likely the only audio source you'll want to engage is the Behringer XR18. At this point, OBS is ready. Now we have some options to consider with the Behringer. To know what routing we'll want to use, you'll have to answer a few questions. Do you plan to be streaming only, or will there be an audience in the room with you that will be listening to the PA? If there is an audience in the room with you, do you plan for the stream to get the same mix as the venue audience is hearing, or will you want to send a secondary mix to the stream? In the case of the first two options, the routing is fairly simple with just a couple of things to consider. Let's cover these first two bases first, and the third option will take a little more configuration time. Let's set up our XR18. The first step is to go into Setup and then into the Audio MIDI tab. We want to make sure we have the XR18 set up for 48K. We set OBS at 48K and the XR needs that same clock rate. And we can close this window now. Earlier, I asked the question about what mix you'd be feeding to the stream. For the first two answers, whether you're mixing only to the stream and no audience in the venue, or there is an audience in the venue, but you're sending the same mix they hear to the stream, then these are the steps for that. Click in out at the top right of the screen to open the routing window. Tab over to the USB sends. OBS is looking for audio from USB 1 and USB 2. So we need to send our mix to USB 1 and USB 2 so OBS can hear it. Left click in the graph and move USB 1 
and USB 2 to left and right, like this. Technically, the default red ring, which you can see the key for the color codes at the bottom, will work for either of these two methods. If you're mixing to a live audience in the room with you, as well as the same mix going to the stream, then we definitely want the red ring option. That way, your house EQ, house compression, and master fader changes will not have any impact on your stream mix. If you're only mixing to the stream, then that setting can still work, but you might want the option to use the master fader to control the stream level, to add a low cut filter to the stream mix, or a bit of your own compression. Or if you do this, at least you can keep the door open to those changes if you want. And by that I mean, to get those options, right click on the red ring and choose the light blue post fader ring. At this point, with either of those methods, you can begin to set up your mix, run a rehearsal, and record it with OBS. You can then listen back on the computer to hear what your mix is going to sound like and how it will translate. You can even upload it as a private or unlisted video and see what any downstream compression that the host has will do to your mix compared to what you heard before you uploaded it. Make any necessary changes to your mix to compensate for that and try again. Once you're happy, save the show and you're ready to go live with that method. Those were the two simple options. Now let's look at that third option. In this scenario, you are performing to a room with a live audience, but you don't want the house mix to be what you send to the stream. So let's talk about how to send a completely separate mix to the stream. We're going to have to dedicate one or two of the XR18 buses for this mix. You'll have to decide if you want mono or stereo for the stream mix. You'll have to have two available buses open on the XR18 for stereo. In either case, we need to get back to our routing screen. Choose in out at the top right to open the routing screen and then tab over to the USB sends tab. For this demonstration, I will have buses five and six be our stream mix, but you can apply this technique to whatever buses you want and whatever buses you have available. Remember though, to link buses in stereo on the Behringer, it has to be odd even channels. You can't link even odd channels. If you only have one bus available, or you just want to send a mono feed to the stream, then just assign USB 1 and USB 2 to the same bus, like this. If you want it to be stereo, then assign them like this. Once again, technically, the red ring works, but we have no ability to add bus compression or EQ, nor will the master aux faders have any impact. If you know you won't be needing those things, then you can leave this just as it is. Otherwise, make a choice based on the key at the bottom. I'm going to choose the light blue ring for post fader by right clicking in the graph and choosing that option. That will give us a master bus fader for the stream and that will also give us the option to add compression or EQ or a high pass filter should we want to. Now we need to choose any channel on our mixer by selecting it. It doesn't matter which channel. Now tab over to Sends and click there. Highlight the globe in the top right. It will turn blue when it's highlighted. That tells the XR we want to apply our Send assignments globally so we don't have to do this setup for each channel by itself. Now, on our stream bus or buses, and for this example I'm using 5 and 6, choose Post Fader by clicking here and here. Since we highlighted the global icon before we did this, all channels now have buses 5 and 6 as post fader. Okay, mouse over to the master section and choose one of the stream buses. I'll choose 6. Go over to the fader tray and highlight it by clicking on the bus 6 tab above the fader. You should see it highlight. We have two very important steps here. First, tab all the way over to the top to channel and click it. If you're setting up stereo buses, in the channel input section at the left, click the stereo link button, like this. That gives us our stereo buses and it automatically panned them for us. And now a really important step. Whether you're doing stereo buses or not, tab on over to the right to the section that says main out and deselect the orange LR left right button you want it grayed out. If you link the buses for stereo in the prior step, then this changes both buses for us. We don't want our stream buses also feeding the house mix. 
Now we can start to put together our stream mix. You can entirely set the mix from scratch if you want just by choosing your bus mix button and then setting the faders for your stream mix. If you chose the option to do your stream mix in stereo, if you look between bus 5 and 6 on the sins tab of any channel, you can see a pan control. You can pan the channel left or right for your stream just like this. For a mixing shortcut, choose your stream bus like this, then just bring every channel you're using up to Unity, and that includes your effect sins on this bus layer. What this does is create a carbon copy of your house mix since the buses are post fader. Now you can run a quick sound check and record it into OBS. Listen back and now tweak your bus five and six channels where you hear it needs to be different than your house mix. If you have channels that you aren't using in the house at all, then just bring those channel faders up so the post fader bus will get signal, but unassign those house channels from the mains by deselecting left and right on those channels. This setup assumed you don't have someone dedicated to mixing only the stream while your house engineer mixes the house. For example, someone with their own iPad dedicated to mixing only the stream. In that case, the main difference would be you'd want to use pre-fader buses instead of post-fader buses when we made our global bus assignments. The video link above has more information about pre and post fader setups as well as monitors, so you might want to click that for some further background information. It's really important that you get your gain structure right, so here's a video about gain structure, and here's a video to help with vocal mixes. Leave me any questions in the comments section below, and let's hear some live stream nightmare stories too. Please like and subscribe to the channel, click the affiliate links to support the channel, click the bell icon for notifications. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.